she's back. So the futon's out and the water tank is out. Van number one is back. It's been a year. It's time for the annual tighten up. All right, all right, all right, all right. We have some warranty issues. Uh, besides warranty issues, there's a lot of things that she wanted to add. More features that we talked about throughout the year. Yeah, there were certainly some issues. They had to do with the uh, build quality, design flaws. That's right, I said it. That's one thing you get here is full disclosure. It's not all peaches and ice cream. Some of the things we're doing besides the tighten up. Uh, this was a panel that was under the fridge. If you remember, it was a beautifully wrapped panel, um, gray marine vinyl with Alex's solid walnut grill that he made, ventilation grill, did a beautiful job on that. So this was under the fridge. And the way we designed this was a pressure fit with kind of the, like a reverse French cleat right there. And it didn't work. When she got out to the deserts of California, and she's driving around in those gravel roads. It kept doing this. It wouldn't stay put. Didn't work. So we're going to replace the, we're going to keep this, but I'm going to build a new wall, wrap it again, and we'll fix it in place. Instead of being a pressure fit, I'll have this pop off with magnets. And that will be, uh, that's a fix. That was a, that was a bad design on our part. Beautifully executed, but a bad design. Same thing with the, uh, this was the little kick plate that was underneath the armoire, right? Same thing, didn't work, French cleat. So this gets fixed as well. Uh, what else we got going on? We didn't get a chance to put in her cinema screen, so this was a cover I made for that spot. Now we got the cinema screen, we're gonna put that in. Uh, so those are some, these, this is warranty work. This is my first warranty work. Uh, a couple of other things, a uh, bad batch of water, some rusty fresh water got into this pump and somehow it just destroyed the stainless steel filter basket that's in this, this cover here. So right away I called the company, I ordered a new pump. They said, when you get this one back, send it to us. We'll e we're gonna take a look as to why this happened with just rusty water. It doesn't make sense, but I'll tell you, this rusty water looks like it had some real sludgy sediment in it. It could have had some filings, you know, whatever. Uh, but it looks like um, the AquaJet, Remco AquaJet, they're gonna take care of me on this. At the very least, this will get re refurbished and cleaned up and they'll send it back to me. I'll put it in my van. Uh, same thing with the heater core. The blower. Here's some more warranty work. The heater core, this is part of the S-bar system from Rickson's. This is what made the cabin heat. You blew air across this heat exchanger and the glycol is running through it, hot glycol. So when that fan blows across this, it blows warm air into the cabin. This came from the Rickson's factory with a leak in it. And we didn't know that until we tested the system. And when were we testing the system? Uh, just a day or two before she was ready to leave for California. So that was last year, last September. So she said, you know what, it's okay. Uh, my van lifestyle, I don't need heat. I only need that heat when we decide to go north. And we're not going north anytime soon. This is pre-COVID. Uh, so no problem when you get when I come back for the tighten up we'll fix the heat okay I've come up with a better uh, high temperature thread locker thread sealer that I use now that I didn't use on van one so I took everything out underneath I took the water this is the heat exchanger that makes the hot water for this van took it out and I'm replacing, I'm taking all these fittings off, clean them up real nice, and I'm gonna use my new high temperature thread locker. So I'm gonna prevent a problem in the future. There's nothing wrong with it now, but I know it'll be a problem in the future. So we're just gonna get it done while I'm in there. All my dimmer switches that are underneath the cabinets, real nice, right? They were all, I've spent so much time thinking about how you go up to grab one and the logic of this one's for that light and that's for that. Well, they all fell. They all dropped out of the cabinet because I had them glued up to the acrylic with a, a stainless steel washer. They all fell, every one of them.
I'll have to replace those. I've got a nice system. I got a good repair for that. So I'm going to fix all those. Uh, let's step into the service department. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This water tank is a beauty. I really like this one. It's, it's so much heavier and thicker walled. Um, and the access hatches proved to be very, very helpful, even in lifting the, the tank out of, its, out of its bed. And these little depressions here, these are the baffles. They're on both sides of the tank and they prevent uh, sloshing to a certain degree. But this tank has got to get cleaned. There's rusty water in there. We're coming back into van number one. So the futon's out and the water tank is out. These two items came out very quickly, very easy. I pulled the fridge, pulled the access panels, and I'm able to work inside this compartment. Let me get over here. Look at that. Oh, here's one of the, here's one of the new items I'm working on. As it turns out, after living in the van for a year, sitting on the futon here, I gave her some USB ports, but no AC. So that was one of the things she asked for. Can you put a, a, a new AC line in underneath the USB? So yeah, of course, because of the way uh, I built this van, it just so happened that I ran two extra lines from the AC panel. One of them is for a microwave. See this? This one's for a microwave. And then I had the other line and that was labeled, I don't know, but that means we could use it. And we did, and there it is. So she got an outlet there. That was one of the easiest fixes I had to ever do. So here we are now. This is the, uh, this is the, the, the guts of the operation. Let me get this out. That's the, the cabin heater. So yeah, all of the things in here have been cut and uh, pulled out. We're gonna replace everything with fresh lines and get it all back to working order. These spring lifts prove to be an excellent, excellent feature for these doors. The problem is we glued them to the plexi, the acrylic from the underside, because we didn't want the holes and screws showing on the front side. Well, they all broke. All the, glue, all the glue let loose, so we're going to have to go in now and screw it in. I'm not going to re-glue it. That's the definition of insanity. This is under the fridge, okay? All the lines have been cut. The point I want to make in here now is, as you saw when we came in, I removed the futon. I removed the water tank. Cut the, cut the water supply line. I removed the water tank. I undid six screws, and I removed the refrigerator. I took out the cabin heater core. I took out the water pump that was bad. I cut the hoses. As you see it here right now, getting it to this point, I don't think it took me an hour to get everything out of here. Alone. I'm here alone. Uh, very easy to get back into it. And this, of the two or the four vans that I've been involved with, this is the most difficult access uh, for, for, because I buried so many of these components under the fridge. If you remember in the videos, uh, my armoire has three drawers. Can you see? Yeah, see this? This is the, these are the drawer boxes for the armoire, all wide open. Remember we discussed that. Behind the scenes, everything's wide open for ventilation. The whole van breathes. Originally, I was supposed to put some of these components above the wheel well, <clears throat> under the armoire. <clears throat> She's gonna have two drawers, and my components under there, and then components under here. And I made the decision that I would give her an extra drawer in the armoire, three drawers instead of two, and I could bring those components in here. I could fit them. And yes, I can fit them. It's a little crowded. And I won't do that again. I don't like that. I don't like a little crowded. I want easy access, and I want easy to work on it, okay? I don't need a little crowded. Now, if I had to remove any individual component in here, I would not have to disturb any of the others. Uh, anything, you know, this could have been lifted right out and the water pump sits right there. My aqua, you know, all that. So uh, the, the, the design theory works. 
as I said, I got this whole van ready for major work and, and tighten up in less than an hour. I'm really beating this horse at this point. The other thing is I took a look around in here and all of my connections using Loctite and lock washers are still dead tight. Now this van left here, it went to Southern California. It bopped around the deserts of Nevada and Arizona, either or or both. Then it came back across the country to Missouri. Then it went back to Southern California and then it's come here to me again. So this van has got some miles on it. I think it's about 13 or 15,000 miles on this van at this point. And the quick look I took at all my nuts and 80-20 connections, they are rock solid tight like the day the van left. So I'm no longer gonna concern myself. Yes, I'm gonna check them all. I'm gonna go throughout this van. That's part of the tighten up is check all these connections. But so far it's worked out very well.